Okay guys, it's called Dude Clem here with some good news and some bad news. First of all, I'll get the bad news out of the way. I was doing some more experiments with my vacuum tube Tesla coil and unfortunately, me being the idiot that I am, I overloaded this valve, it overheated and I've killed it. Good news is, I've got some more valves coming now from fellow YouTuber Robot797, so hopefully they'll be here within the next few weeks and I can continue this experiment and hopefully get some better output out of it. So anyway, I'm going to roll the video now of what can happen so you know what can happen. Now you might remember the Tesla coil experiment from a few videos back, or maybe the previous video, I don't know if I uploaded any videos since then, but I've got something on my meter. Anyway, fellow YouTuber Robot797 has offered to send me some tubes for free, which will give much more power than this little thing can do. But I thought in the meantime, I'll go and tune this thing so it's absolutely perfect. So by the time I get those new tubes, I won't have to do much farting around with it to get it going. Anyway, I made a new second, um, I've made a new, oh, what's it called, feedback. I made a new feedback coil. Here, I made a new primary. About 40 turns of wire there, about the same amount of turns of wire there. I've got a variable capacitor across the primary so I can tune the primary so it has the same resonant frequency as the secondary. And also in the feedback network I've included a variable resistor and a capacitor so I can tune the grid leak circuit properly. Also at the back here, I don't know how well you can see it but made a little circuit here for various different voltages. Now across these three terminals I can get three different voltages. Across these two here I can get 220 volts oh sorry 270 volts AC. Across here I can get about 380 volts DC. And across these on the end about 760 volts DC, which should be plenty enough voltage for the new tubes. I'm just going to have to put a capacitor, um, yeah, capacitor across the diode so the diode doesn't blow when I'm using that kind of stuff. Now, at the moment, I'm only using the 270 volts AC to power this circuit. The only thing I'm worried about is I don't know if this transformer is going to have enough oomph to power anything. May have to get a bigger transformer. I can easily do that. I'll just rewire a microwave oven transform and use that. If this transformer can't power the filament of the new valves, or if it can't, or if it can't provide enough power for the high voltage, but we'll see. We'll see. And to measure any output, I've got my scope with a bit of wire connected there for the antenna. I've got it set up so there isn't a trace on the screen all the time, so it's not going to burn itself into the screen. When anything gets picked up along this wire, the scope will switch itself on automatically and we'll see a result on the screen. And of course, fluorescent tube, which I'm also going to use to measure any output. I don't think I mentioned that the, um, that the feedback coil is actually movable. I can move this up and down to get it in just the right position for maximum output. So now I'm going to turn this little thing on. I'm just going to dim the lights, turn this thing on and we'll see what we get. Right, well, while we're waiting for that to warm up, I'm just going to pause the video. Right, okay, and the scope's already coming to life. We're definitely getting something. I'm just going to move the camera down a bit so you can see more what I'm doing. So I can adjust this variable capacitor to tune my secondary in, which seems to be happy right about there. I can adjust the feedback by this variable resistor here. Now I know I'm going to have to use something more powerful than that, but as this is just a low power test, I'm hoping it will last out while I'm doing this. So, just adjusting this until. Okay, well we seem to get the cleanest output right about there. Not 
not seeing any breakouts, but it is definitely oscillating. Okay, I'm going to adjust that while holding this fluorescent tube near it and see where it becomes the brightest. Okay, that's what the thing fully turned. So that variable resistor is now just a short circuit. I think I can see a little bit of corona at the top there. Not much though. Okay, I'm gonna Okay, I've got the variable resistor fully on zero, so it's absolutely just a short circuit at the moment. I'll adjust this until this becomes brightest. Okay, it seems to be but seems to be I'd say right about there where it's pointing straight up it seems to be about the best. Got a bit of an ugly waveform on the scope. It's not a nice sinusoid wave like it was before. So I'm just going to adjust this. Okay. Now, hopefully, without shocking myself, I'm going to move the feedback and see if we get any better output. I know this is going to detune the coil while I'm doing this because my hand's near it, but. Should give us some results. I can definitely see changes on the oscilloscope. Oh, I just saw a little tiny sparkler at the top there. Wasn't much. Uh, but I definitely think we're getting something. Okay, I'm just going to adjust this some more. Okay, I can just about see a little, little glow at the top of the pin there. I don't know if that you can see that on the camera. Can't really, but trust me, it is there. We'll adjust this again. Okay, that's really not doing much. My variable resistor is getting hot because I saw part of it glowing, so that's not very... Just hope it lasts out while I'm doing this tuning. Oh, we've completely lost it. Oh, crap. Um, that is not good. My valve is glowing an unhealthy colour. Well, as photonic induction would say, I've popped it! Well anyway, I'm still going to upload this video as sort of a what can go wrong when you're doing this thing. On that slightly sad note, um, until next time, goodbye and maybe I'll have some better tubes.